What's going on, Business Athlete Nation? Good morning, Nicole Bernard. Good morning. How's it going? Excellent. Thank you. I got the wrong banner up here. Here we go. There we go. Mornings in live with Keith and Nicole. We got people in the room already this morning, Nicole. Woo! Yay! Good morning, everybody. Hey, so today the hook is, I had Naomi Rose Everly on the show yesterday afternoon, Nicole, and she was going to join us this morning to rip apart your LinkedIn profile, but she can't make it today. So instead... I'm going to rerun yesterday's clip with Naomi Rose. She ripped apart my LinkedIn profile. Awesome. And that's what she does for a living. Nicole, she meets with humans like you and I, and she's like, oh, I would make this change. I'd make this change. I can help you here. I can help you here. So it was awesome. So I'm going to rerun a number of minutes from yesterday's episode with Naomi. Nicole, so when we're in, we're, we're, I'm interviewing her yesterday, and all of a sudden, Boom, this door opens and these cats barrel in and she starts laughing and then we're talking and then with the 42 minute mark, all of a sudden, all this noise and this catastrophe happens and lights are falling in her face. The cats got up on the desk, everything fell off and she was like, ah! it was, it was, it's just the reason why I do live, man, because she was these cats you think about kids interrupting meetings man these cats right. came in and destroyed the whole thing it was fun it was fun so um I, and i got i got some life hacks today for people i got some life hacks today for people nicole so i i got some tips to help people throughout their day today and if we have time and i think we will have time but i found something that i think is pretty interesting regular people try the u.s army fitness test hmm now, I bring that up because I know you are in the midst of training for your ultra marathon coming up. You're, you're on day five of your ultra marathon training, your 100-day ultra marathon training. So I figured that might be interesting. It fits within the athletic pillars of our, of our business. So I figured we'd show that, you know, bring that out to the crowd today. Um, so I'm excited about that. I, I got to be honest, everybody, Business Athlete Nation, including Nicole, I... Uh, yeah, so I'm having awareness around this daily morning commitment. There, <laughs> there, there is. Uh, uh, because you too? I, what's that? I said you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should we talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, it's me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so Keith and Nicole are breaking up on the air in front of all of you. We are five days into our into our commitment, and we're already thinking, "What the hell am I doing?" Now, so so I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell everybody how this all goes. So, I've been having chats with you know people, Nicole, and the old my friends from old Legacy Media, right? Do morning shows, afternoon shows, and evening shows, and they're like, "You're doing what with Nicole?" I'm like, yeah, doing more, going to, going to do a daily morning show. <laughs> they looked at me like, really? I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. On top of your afternoon show, I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you don't think you can, you don't think it's too much to bite off? I'm like, oh, fuck no, it's a lot. I'm like, Ryan Seacrest, do it all. Dude, we're the new Regis and uh, Kelly. <laughs> it's exactly it. We are absolutely Regis and Kelly. Now, here's the reality <laughs> coming up with fresh content for everybody every single day. I'm like, oh, okay. You mean Monday's already over and I got to get stuff ready for Tuesday? <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? You use AI. No, yeah, good, thing, good thing the internet exists. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I know what they do before. Like, seriously, like if you think back to like Regis and like Kathy Lee, I don't know if you remember that, but that was like 80s, oh my God. early 90s. Are you but... actually bringing up Kathy Lee Gifford? You are. Yeah. You're now, you're now, you are. Nicole Bernard, you fully dated us past the generation that listens to us. Well, you know, I said Paul Harvey yesterday, so I may as well just go all in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, a few minutes into this. So here's so Naomi says to me yesterday, she's like, so Keith, when I tune into the first 10 minutes, I want to make sure that I enjoy the banter with the hosts. Mm -hmm. I, she says, well, I want to make sure that I'm going to get something out of it from you guys. I says to Naomi, yeah, well, we're here to entertain you. Yeah. Oh, if you don't like what we have to say, I have an idea. If you don't like what Keith and Nicole have to say, <clears throat> change the channel mm -hmm. that works there's lots of choice today in the world there's oh, true. 
tons of choice. So again, coming up today, we're going we're gonna to show you guys regular people trying to do the U.S. fitness test. I found it quite humorous. Um, we're going to dig into my LinkedIn profile review, um, which was a great conversation. Uh, a few other things. Nicole, I've been reaching out to people looking for guests to come on the show. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yes. So if you're listening right now and you're like, hey, I have something to contribute, I uh, would love to have you on the show. I will tell you. I had somebody reach out to me yesterday who's, uh, and listen, I, I got no, I love every human. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, where's it going with this one? But the message was, hi, I'm an activist. I'd like to be on your show. Need a little more, but yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh, so you're an activist. Okay. What are you activating for? Right? Yeah. 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 So anyways, hey, why was your day yesterday? We uh, we wrapped up our show at eight. Uh worked real hard to uh, to get it up on the old the old beta, VHS, you know, DVDs, all the old legacy platforms people can take our content with them. Uh and then I had a bunch of things going on. How was your day yesterday? Oh, it was good. Um uh, yeah, after this went running, and my legs are actually sore today from the hills, so that's great. Yes. Um, really just did a lot of work, watched the Blazers game. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. It's kind of flew by. Um, how about you? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I got off our show yesterday. I uh, got the old, uh, got, got the stuff going as quick as we can up on the old podcast machines. And then uh, I did my 60 minute power zone ride. Yes, how'd that go? Uh, it was tough. It was a tough one. Yeah. I, so to, to, to business athlete nation, I'm a Peloton fan. If you're listening to me right now and you want to come ride with me, work out with me, tra- strength train with me, do happy baby with me. I know some of you love I, my kids love when they walk downstairs and see dad doing happy baby. Uh, I will tell you, Keith be fast on the Peloton platform. Mm, awesome. Not slow, Nicole fast. Yeah. I think I'm going to go for a run today. I mean, not for you because you hate it. But is it really? <laughs> oh, I might go to the gym today. I, I meant to tell you that too. It's, oh. I put an alarm because I'm going to try and start doing Tuesday, Thursday strength training. I'm nice. Yeah. There you so. go. There you go. So, so to, to to business athlete nation, Nicole is the loves strength training. It is it is the most favorite thing she loves to do. So uh, I know that she has not been procrastinating at all regarding yeah. strength training not, not at all not at all so that's coming up here so she's gonna get that done here today um listen we're 10 minutes in i've always i'm trying to get a little better structure with this whole thing uh why don't we do this let's break for 10 uh we will come back uh in a minute uh i want to talk about your training and then after that why don't we get the audience into my discussion with naomi yesterday or on the LinkedIn profile review. So if you're tuning in right now, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to I'm gonna dial in the conversation I had with Naomi. I invite you to tune in and listen. Uh, she uh, sat down with, with me in my, in my LinkedIn profile, and she broke it down for me and made suggestions on improvements, on how I can make it better, et cetera, et cetera. Again, Nation, the ambition with this show is to give you guys things you can take with you to help you start your day. Yeah. Right? So whether it's motivating content for myself or Nicole, uh, aspirational ideas, uh, and tips and tricks. So, Nicole, let's step away for a minute. I know we stepped, we got in here nine minutes ago. Let's go refresh our coffee. We'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll do some LinkedIn stuff, okay? Okay, awesome. awesome. Hang tight. All right, everybody, I'm going to go stick Nicole up there. We're going to do that there. Oh, we're going to do.
All right, Keith Nicole back here in the lab. Mornings in the lab with Keith Nicole. So listen, I am going to share with you guys a little conversation I had yesterday with Naomi Rose Everly. She is agreeing to join us here on the show to do to break down your profiles. So we're hoping I'm hoping to make a fun segment here. Here's the ambition. I'm inviting you nation to join Nicole, myself and Naomi weekly. Put your profile on display and have Naomi rate it, read it, review it on the air and rip it apart. Have some fun with it. Help you as a LinkedIn user improve your profile. So I'll tell you what happened, Nicole. Yesterday after she reviewed my profile, I ended up on on one of my network's profiles, somebody in my network's profile. I was, I was on LinkedIn yesterday and I stumbled upon his profile and I was like, oh, looks horrible. So I sent him a note. I said, hey, <clears throat> I was on your profile today. It sucks. I can help you. <laughs> Can we chat so I can help you? I'm, just, I'm feeling all confident now. And we talking a bunch of stuff. So like, all right, let's see if I can teach this guy what I've just learned. So um, let's jump into to Naomi. So she's going to break mine down today. And then Nicole, she's going to come back and break yours down. Uh, yeah. I think maybe Thursday or so. And then, and then Nation, the ambition here again, just to repeat myself, is I want to do this regularly. So look for content. Look for calls to action. You're going to get free advice from Naomi. She typically charges for this. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'm looking to create a personal brand. I'm looking to make a career shift. I'm looking to do something with my profile. This would be the time to engage with Naomi so she can show you what's working and what's not. So bear with me, Nicole, while I put this on stage with us and, and bring us up. Okay, hang tight. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to do this She's here. actually just... I think we're about right here. So... That for me has worked brilliantly. For the last 11 years, I've been doing that. Um, and it's just such a great conversation you can have with people in a great relationship, um, finding out how they're struggling and if you're the right solution to them, for them. Um, and that's what all of us need. We need that hook to get people from, oh, that's a nice LinkedIn profile to, well, what do you want me to do about it? How do I start this relationship with you? How do I go deeper into solving this problem and actually finding out if I wanna work with you? Um, what would that look like if I approached you? How would working with you look like? Um, so we have to figure out all of these things before we can put it onto the LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. You get all that sussed and then it's about engaging people with that problem and getting it on 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 there. Sorry, yeah. you're gonna ask. Yeah, Naomi, what, What's the number one thing that people do wrong on LinkedIn? Talk about themselves. Explain that. <laughs> okay, so I think we all know if it. Okay, so I wanted to add, I wanted to jump in here, Nicole. So I found this fascinating when she says the number one thing that people do wrong on LinkedIn was talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, if I find this I find this an interesting comment because while I don't disagree with it. I have found the greatest success on LinkedIn when I do talk about myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a boastful way. What mm -hmm. I mean, and as, and as I think Naomi is going to share with us, Nicole, is when I speak about uh, failures or accomplishments or presenting myself in an authentic manner, yeah. when I try to create content, when I talk with the audience, instead of talk at or talk to the audience. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, totally. Because I think, I mean, we want to as humans hear other people's stories, but we also want to see ourselves in their stories. So if we can, you know, write it in a way or how you write it, like that's relatable, I think that is what works. Yes, exactly, exactly. So I, I was, it was nice when she said that people talk about themselves. So when she made that comment, I found myself on some profiles yeah. looking at people's content. I'm like, oh, that's not resonating with me and I know why. Right. And, then I, and then I read pe content from people like uh, Alana Sparrow or, or Frankie Velasquez or, or, or Nat Berman, Darren Mass, uh, these, these creators that wh while they speak about themselves, they speak about themselves in a way that, that, that is inspiring and relatable to me and makes me curious. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Right. So let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's continue. A profile written in a third person is obviously a no, no. Um, anything that reads like a CV is a no, no. The only person that can understand a CV is an HR person because that's how they read. Most people, we don't relate to CVs. We relate to people. Um, and then we're asking ourselves, 
all of the time. What is in this for me? And is this a good use of my time? So if I've actually read a comment of yours on LinkedIn, and I've seen that first 47 characters of your headline, which is the only what's going to show up. And it, I can see what you've commented. And this isn't just an opinion piece. This is actually related to your subject. So I can see that in the first 47. I'm going to go, ooh, click. I'm going to come to your profile. Instantly, I'm going to look at it. Is this a good use of my time or a complete distraction? So tidiness is one big thing. But what is in this for me? Why am I having this conversation with you? I don't care about your career at this point because I haven't got to know you. I don't care about what you did, where you did it. What I care about is tell me more about the subject and how it relates to me. And then I'm going to care about you. So it's, it's about really setting the scene with the context of the problem that you solve. And so people go, oh, OK, I get it. And it might not be for me, but I might know somebody it is for. But at least then I can actually say, oh, that's what he does. Um, and we want to write it like it's a conversation. So if I was at a networking event, I'd look across the room and I say, oh, that guy Keith looks decent. I'll go over and say, hello, that's your photo. <laughs> I come up to you and I say, hi, I'm Naomi. What's your name? And you say, Keith, great. Keith, what do you do? And you'll give me a one liner and that's your headline. And I go, ah, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. And then you'll actually talk to me for probably about 60 to 90 seconds, maybe two minutes. And you'll tell me about what you're doing. But because you see my face, you're interacting with me and you're hearing you're you're pitching it to a person. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore. What you want to do is you want to write the same way. If you were to pose a big question in the middle of your, I'm telling you about this, I would go, mm, yeah, oh, and let me answer, which we don't want to happen, happen in our LinkedIn profile because it is a less than a two minute read to read the about section. Um, and we want to cover off like, what is the problem we solve? What is the, our credibility in this area? Um, how do we fix it? What do we believe about it? Why are we passionate about it? And then how can I get to take another step with you, the call to action? So it's really, you've got to write that about section really carefully. And then obviously it's about your experience. Now the entry for your company is to say, I'm going to leave no room for question here. Let me define exactly what my company does. At the profile company, we do da, 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 da. Okay, great. Now I, now I know that I've really understood. And then you want to put your packages in hey, this is the big bells and whistles package that we do. And people go, wow, I love it. Well, but I don't know you. I can't, I can't do that. So it takes a step back. So then you go for your middle of the road package, like, oh, I can see myself doing that. That, that would be a good midway step. Oh, but I don't know you. Let me just take a step back again. Oh, but you're offering me a, a, a chat, not a free chat, not a chat really, but you're offering me a diagnosis that I can, I can do that. That sounds really valuable. Let me book in for that diagnosis. Let me have that conversation with you. So people will book in. Then with your past experience, the only people who are going to read that are those at the 11th hour about to buy from you and trying to make sure if that's the right decision. The people surrounding the decision maker or the final decision maker that's doing due diligence to have a look around or the person who's just bought from you who now has buy, uh, buyer's remorse. And it's like, oh, who's this person I just spent this money with? I don't trust them. They are going to read your past experience. And what you want to do in there is you want to define the company. This is how what it was. This is what we did. Don't assume that somebody knows that brand name. And if it is a household name, define how big it is and how many locations, how many people, um, but in relation to your role. So if it's HR stuff, people stuff, of course, we're going to mention the number of people, the number of locations. Um, if it's IT stuff, and it, you actually did this role in the early 2000s, it's really important that you point out the dates, not directly, but, you know, during this time, things were really evolving and we had to figure out on the hop how to do such and such and such and such. And these are the transformations that I was able to bring in. Um, so you're constantly backing up your credibility, setting context in what you're saying so people understand why your credibility is so important. Because you might be a 60 year old in IT and someone's like, oh, you don't know what you're doing anymore. But when you see how they evolved through the last 20 years, you're like, well, actually, they can really bend and shift. And this is just another era. Of course, they can get it mm -hmm. and they can lead teams, you know. So, you know, and sometimes when we've come up with that, actually, it has to be done a different way. 
um, I really believe in this. It needs to be done a different way. That is the past experiences where you came up through the ranks and saw it being done differently or felt that it should be done differently. So you can put in there how that evolved um, without ever obviously putting a company down um, or anything negative but you can spin it in a positive way as to i saw firsthand and this is why so again it, you're not ever talking about yourself everything you write is what is in this for the person reading it and how does it help them to make a decision to work with me you said something at the beginning of your answer when you said that you see a comment from somebody mm -hmm. and you quickly look at what they do and then we as humans quickly become curious and we click on their profile Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what they do. I've discovered, and this is something I've discovered, and, and I don't know, maybe it's the magic I've discovered here. Nobody's discovered it yet. But man, uh, I launched my learning. Blah, blah, mm -hmm, yeah, I launched the morning show last week to prove a test. Uh huh. Mornings in North America from 6 a.m. to like 9 a.m., LinkedIn's hopping. Maybe the same thing in London there in the morning. There people, are, people get up in the morning, they get on their socials and have their coffee and do their thing. So I thought to myself, hmm, I know that if you click my profile, you'll come to my page and you'll see just my banner. I wonder if I go and become active across the socials at 6 and 8, 9 a.m. And, and, and also uh, broadcast live and link at the same time. Do you know, Naomi, how many people do what you exactly just said? They see me comment, they click my profile, they come to my page, they start watching Keith do live in the lab. Yeah. It works. And the people that... Uh, I see come here because they see a comment somewhere. So, our, so my point is the morning show content, uh, th there's, there's a platform of growth happening there because people, the audience is there. They see my comment in the morning. Oh, what's this Keith guy? They click on it. Oh, there he's talking right now. And they get a chance to get to know me instantly. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if we're going to see more of that with people it's because the way that LinkedIn yeah. broadcasts the top of your profile. I think we are. But one thing I would say is, is always answering the question, what's in it for me? Because when I've with other podcasts that I've gone on to sometimes, sometimes they, they the person gets very confident about their audience and they start off the podcast with banter between them and their co-hosts. That is absolutely no relevance to me. And I'm, I'm not part of it because I've just joined this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 10 minutes of my time I don't have and I'll switch off. Mm -hmm. So it's always, you know, I'm only going to keep listening if there's something in this for me, if yes. this is helping me today. And sometimes it's not an insult that the person disappears. It's just it's not on my agenda today. It's not mm -hmm. my thought patterns right now. Um, but you can't, yeah, it's it's always got to come back to what's in it for the person listening. What is the value that they're getting from this? Um, and, yeah, they will click on and they will listen um, because people are curious and they are trying to solve problems in their lives and or curious about the symptoms that they have to go, oh, there's a solution. Oh, I could do something about this. Um, I, I would reckon sometimes the problems that people have at work, they just want to be entertained and want a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And if, and if that's <laughs> that a, is the problem you are solving. <laughs> if that, we can bring something fresh and different, perhaps that's, uh, that's solving a problem. Before we go, if you maybe give me a couple minutes of your time, critique my profile. You landed on it, you looked at it. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, did you, did you give me some critique on it? Right now we're broadcasting on it, so you're just going to see our two heads on it right now. But, uh, you know, I, I'm all about learning. I'm all about taking it in. I want to learn. Uh, so if there's anything you can give me some advice, some free advice while I got you. I, yeah, I'm gonna, absolutely. I'm gonna I did have a good look earlier, and I wasn't too um, shocked, so that's good. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. So, so I have um, a little bit of a, I got a little bit of credibility in your point of view then. Yeah, absolutely. Let me see. So I looked at you on my phone to begin with, um, okay. and your featured content really stood out to me um, because it, you have you have sense. This is what I stand for. This is what I used to achieve my biggest goals. And you've got you've got a um, branded background. So you've got the colors coming through and it's standing out. So it makes you go, oh, this person's confident and courageous and they're doing something. Um, and then I've come down to your about section. Yes. Um, in a in a blink, in a heartbeat, in a span of a phone call. That's how fast life changes. You've got my attention. That was my hook. Um, do you like the hook? Yeah, I do like the hook. And so that is. And then I I got quite into your story. I was like, oh wow, okay. And all of that does relate back to what you do as a business athlete performance lab. That does relate back because, awesome. you know, for somebody else. 
it just wouldn't because it would just be like why do i care that you lost a job you lost a job i don't know if you say it that way but um why do i care yes because you know, they don't yeah. care about you right yes but in terms of what you're selling i actually do care about that actually is interesting because it it does say you know like i took this dip and this is how i pulled myself out and this is how i can help you so it does work and also you've got very short um sentences which again when you're telling a pacey story the way you're telling a pacey story yes. that really works i wouldn't say for somebody who's an expert professional in other subjects with other audiences yes i wouldn't say that would necessarily work but like i said at the beginning of this it's all about your audience yeah you know, how they buy and how they respond you're talking to individuals here and you're talking to people who want to be inspired and lifted up yes. so this story inspires and lifts up and it's pacey so you've structured it really nicely and it's easy to read um and i go straight in on it so okay. that's really that works really well and then you've got um your audacious goals you've achieved um i think that there might this 50 million exit is really um huge for what your credibility um and i'd like to see more in there because actually when i started reading i thought well anyone can track this anyone can climb that it just takes a bit of money and a plane ticket um and a determination obviously but i wouldn't i wanted to see more about you as a business person in there um, so can I, so this is this is fascinating to me because mm -hmm. I I work with a collaborator and we have debated that point, that fifty million dollar exit, because I had it on my hook there. You know, you you talk about how, how a person has their when you see okay what somebody does and so right now I so my hook on mine is uh, uh, I help amb ambitious humans achieve their ambitious goals right. So yeah. for the longest time I had that as my you know I sold my company for fifty million dollars just like every other person that has their hook is the same thing. But you know what, Naomi. I found myself blending in with everybody else and it became like an arms race, right? It was like, okay, well, Naomi sold her company for 800 gazillion dollars and Joe sold his for a dollar and Keith did his for 50. And I'm like, I, I, that but You know what though, Keith, I'm gonna say it. Yeah. You only feel that way because you're in a pool of people who did that. Where no. a lot of people, and yeah. so you, when you, you're thinking that that's, there's so many people who've done that, very, very few people have done that. And you're, look, you're not looking to people who've done that, you're looking to people who aspire to it. Okay, so, so you're, you're, therefore, you're saying don't bury it, highlight it, because I've buried it, not buried it, but I've kind of downplayed it because I, because I, A, it's not, I hear what you're saying, and that's why this is really great, and I'm really great, I'm really grateful right now that you're, you're teaching me this and we're having this discussion, because what you're saying is, Keith, don't bury it, hide it, I'm sorry, don't, don't bury it, enlighten yeah. it, because you're curious yeah. about it. Yeah, so the other thing is accountability partner, business athlete. The other thing you've got going on against you is so many people are like, oh, I'm a business coach, I'm a this, I'm a that. Yes. A business athlete accountability partner is the equivalent of a business coach. You've just used different words. Yes. So what would be better than to just, yes, that is exactly what you do. That's fine. But let's not blend in with everybody else trying to help everybody else to build a business. Let's tell people, actually, I did a 50 million exit and then carry on with what you're saying um so yeah because the, the next thing you've got on there you're giving away is a free guide achieve your goals mm -hmm. okay well why would i get it from you who are you that i would want to get it from you well i would want to get it from you because you did a 50 million exit right do you right. see so that, do. that connection is really important that I that do. goes yes. i do the next I do. thing i'm going to say is yeah. I would like to see less in those, those lists of achievements, which I think are really important. Yes. I would actually probably like to see less travel stuff and more breakdown of business stuff, like a 50 50 balance. Okay. Because I could come face to face with a great white if I paid someone to put me in a cage. Sure. You see what I mean? I do. And yeah. I know there's a different story behind that and what yes, that meant. Yes. yes. But people can dismiss that quite quickly. Uh, maybe I wouldn't like to do that. Maybe I'm too scared, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then what I'm going to say to you, this 50 million pound exit, when I go through your background, I actually was struggled to find out which company you did that with. Um, because you said that you became an Uber dad for a while, mm -hmm. I can figure out actually that's the ICUC one, right? Yes, yes, and yes. I'm going to have to think about that. I'm going to have to go looking for that. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is, is that you, somewhere in this entry, we make it very clear. I think if we would say founder and president exited for 50 million in, as your job title, there's a balance there. I think it, it might match your personality. Other people, it might not match their personality. But I think for you, 
that could be the hook. Then what we want to do is you've gone, you've described what the company does, but I want to know more, right? Yes. I want to know more about this and I want to see those audacious goals show up. So tell me the story framed around a number of audacious goals. So you're not going to go, hey, this is my audacious goal. But when you're thinking about what am I going to say about it, what am I going to highlight, come up with five of your biggest audacious goals that you actually can say you did in that 19 year period um, and big pivotal moments that you made happen as part of the, the growth and as as getting to this point and tell the story in there. Every single one of these entries here is a um, it's like a shop window. It's a it's a shop pain. Mm -hmm. And why not really get in there and say something um really great in there? Um <laughs> so additional no talent skill, always on time for full-time parenting. Again, I wouldn't tell everybody to do that, but I think it's on point for your brand. Um, because you are creative and you are, you know, saying a lot of things. So I think let's get right in there. Um about what these things are. And then legacy space is a celebration of life, helping people build a meaningful legacy we offer. All right, so what I'd like to know with your legacy space is, um, why did you start it? Mm. What what inspired you? Um, how big is it now? Because this is LinkedIn, you, it's more of a, that's where the CV bit comes in, like how mm. big have I grown mm. it? Mm -hmm. What's my ambition with it? Oh no, you've shut it down anyway. Yeah, it failed. Yeah, it was. Oh. It was it was a take, it off your, take it off. Take it off your profile. Oh yeah, um, get rid of it, eh? Huh? Just get rid of it, eh? Yep, just get rid of it. The reason is, is six months, and what I'm looking at is everything that's just going to take my my attention. Yeah. And it's taking my attention. I would almost want to go with take full time parent off because it's taking my attention. Ah yes. But it is also part of your brand. Um, and it's also links to the story you told above. Yes. Um, and so one year, 10 months, that's two years. That is a huge thing for you. That tells me that your transformation turnaround period was two years. And that, again, relates to your story and relates to your credibility of you were in the wilderness effectively for two years. Yeah. Right? Yes. So that's, and I, I, if I were interviewing you for this, I'd probably want to get a little bit more out of that to put in there. Um, and actually, I would probably put a line in there, um, how you transitioned out of it, because there's a story there as well. And I need to see how you came out of it. Um, and that would then bring up your president founder, 50 million one up the list quite a lot. Um, well, we're only taking one out, aren't we? Um, what I would then say, if you're still with me, because I'm doing this very quickly. No, this is awesome. And I just deleted legacy space. So everything's us. We, we bumped it all up. So we, have, refresh. we have Apple. Yeah, we have full-time parenting. So you, I think we leave the full-time parenting there because it helps paint yep. a picture of who I am and what I'm I all do. about. Part yeah, of just tell us how you, how you evolved as a person to then say, right, I'm taking this step. Yes, um, yes, yes. I want to hear your step next, you know, like, yeah. actually, it looks like you... I don't think any captive, I don't think any captive interactive either because that really doesn't mean anything. That's so because my life is really built around ICUC. That was my that was the start of that was my that was the startup Naomi that I took from nothing and sold it. So you did so um, for you so you did five years at Captive Interactive. You need to keep it. That's the start of your career, um, two thousand two, and so this is you finding your feet as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Oh this yeah. Is, what you mean? Yeah. Right. So tell the story of finding your feet. Um, how big you grew it, and if it failed or you sold it, tell us. Well, so, we it, did, so it, it ended up, sorry to joke, but it ended up pivoting into ICUC. So it was really one of those things where we started out as doing this, as we were developing it, we're like, oh, the solution we're actually solving is that, made a pivot, sunsetted Captive Interactive, and then grew ICUC. You follow tell me? Us that. Okay. Tell us that. Okay, because that's the story. We know that you did all of those list of skills. Yeah. Um, tell us that story about how it moved and became that, because actually that's everything. And the ability to pivot, the ability to see solutions, that's all part of your credibility because you are being an accountability coach partner. Yeah. And that's all part of it, right? So tell us these things yes. um, and how that became. So no one should ever delete anything from their profile that was – pivotal to their development um, that can be relevant to what they're doing now. 
So the reason why I said legacy space is because the celebration of life is completely off somewhere else. Yeah, it failed, it, it, and it was six it, months. Yes, and that's okay. You can put that elsewhere and tell a story about it. We're not hiding it. But what we don't want when we're scanning through is things yep. to take our attention away from what actually is important. Full time parent is a massive part of your story and how you grew and changed and found your feet again. And ICUC is the story, the 50 million. Yes. Um, and the captive interactive is an evolution to get there. Yes. So we yep. need those things. The next thing I'm going to say to you is the talk show host. Yeah. I do not see the name of this talk show here. Um, it needs to be talk show host dash. Oh yeah, live um, in the, live the, the name yeah. of it right yes. there. Yeah. Then tell me um, a daily live talk show for entrepreneurs. Da, 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 big hairy girls. Da, 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 da. Subscribe to our channel and join the newsletter. Tell me actually. Give me a follow on LinkedIn and you'll get notified. Tell me that it's live on LinkedIn. Um, tell me where I can get past episodes. Um, tell me about some of the guests that you've had along. Um, tell me um, what I can do if I want to be a guest and the criteria you're looking for. Um, really engage me into, yes, I can find this really easily if I go looking for it. Um, and then you actually want me to come along because sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, I do, I do this thing. Can I come? Can I come? And yeah. if you don't tell me, my insecurities might go off like, oh, I'm just not really invited there, am I? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, make I it really it. obvious for me. So um, you're saying put this right inside. So I, I, I updated that, hit refresh. So you're saying put this right inside of the talks, like right inside the description here, right? like right inside this whole content, because if you're down here reading it, like use yeah. this space effectively. I have, yeah, I have not used this effectively because I got all the space to, to use it, right? I get yeah, it. I've got 2,000 characters, including spaces. So really think about uh, if I come to see you, like we're what someone's watching this or another one of your things. Yeah. Um, how do I engage with this? How can I get on board with this fun talk show? You know, like yeah. how do I become part of a tribe? Like I really want to know. That's it. Um, You're right. Make it really easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, Keith, the next thing is, um, you've been a founder to many things. Actually, I'll only show up as two founders. Um, you are being an accountability partner and you've decided a business coach is a business athlete and you've got a 50 million pound um, business behind you. Yeah. So your product, your business is I want to coach people. I want them to pay me money to coach them and keep them accountable to their big audacious goals. And I want to challenge them. So we don't in this because this is what you're selling at the moment. Right. Don't be a founder. Tell me, I think probably here, business athlete and accountability partner is the thing to put in the job title. here. Oh, I see what you mean. Duh. Right. Because founder, director. Is what the hell is that? Space. Like, it is. Yeah. Oh, I, like, I love how intense. When you're, when you're a founder of a company that's sold for 50 million pounds, it's everything. When you're a founder of a company that has one person, oh, fuck, oh forget it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right. Yes, because now it really emphasizes the value of president and founder of ICUC. Oh, I see. Right, because you're right. get rid of that. What? So the other thing in here is, what are you selling, Keith? Like, what is, what is your package? What is it that puts the roof over your head? It's not this. Yeah. Yes. This is all leading to something. Yes. So tell me, how do I work with Keith? Yes. And um, at the, biz the business of the Okay, so Nicole, I had to interrupt that because I, uh, so Nation, you, you've been listening to Naomi rip apart my LinkedIn profile, and I hope you're all enjoying it. But she just said something, Nicole, that I, I actually didn't sleep last night. <laughs> and she said, you're not making any money doing this. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you, I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? I thought the whole, I, I had another guy on my show yesterday afternoon who, uh, who, who's a talent agent for actors. And he's like, Keith, if you're, if your goal is to become a famous entertainer doing this platform, you're all doing the wrong thing. I was like, oh, fuck. So these people just wrecked my day yesterday. <laughs> Did you close the peanut butter jar? Did you it's, it's still closed, Nicole. It's still closed. It's absolutely still closed. So I hope you're still. I hope you're all still enjoying the breakdown of Keith's profile with with uh, with Naomi Rose Everly. We got a couple minutes left. We're going to wrap it up, and we're going to come back and get into some life hacks. We're going to get into regular people doing army fitness testing and a few other fun things. So let's wrap up with Naomi Rose Everly breaking down Keith's LinkedIn profile. And like I said, on the bottom of the ticker, if you want your profile ripped apart, uh, improved, really, I'm not having some fun with ripped apart, profile improved, 
Naomi is somebody that you want to have a chat with. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep keep playing the and finish up this interview with with Naomi. Awesome. This is the bit about. So you know what's happened? I'll be honest with you. What's happened is so when I launched the lab a number of months ago, it was it was launched as a as a wide net as I was working myself back into the world and just figuring shit out. Naomi, uh, I cast it as a wide net. Use the old marketing language of attention, interest, desire, and action. Let's get some attention. Yeah. Let's create some interest. Let's create some desire. And then what's happened out of this is live and live with Keith Billis, what we're on right now, is taking a life of its own on um, because we've discovered that Uncle Keith here is pretty good at this. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Mornings of the Lab is starting to take a life of its own on as well. So this, so, so the Business Athlete Performance Lab in front of my eyes has been um, not changing. My vision is very clear in my mind. It's just taking longer to come to the world yeah. Uh, because these shows have taken more time than I was expecting them to take. So we're a category killer. We're, we're, we're a new category design business uh, with, with really what Bapple is ultimately. We're a media company, accountability company. Uh, uh, we're a place for remote creators, hybrid people. Um, we've got a number of things happening. Uh, I am not an accountability coach. Do I do accountability coach people? Yes. I build personal brands for people. I host people. I do a lot of things under the lab banner, but you are bang on. Correct. I've done a really shitty job telling that. And as a matter of fact, people how they can work with you and how they can get in touch with you. Like yeah. what, is, what is the criteria? Like you don't mess around with silly people who can't pay your fee. Right. So tell people I work with, um, See, I, I have business owner founders that are turning over um, three million pounds and looking for their next thing to get to yes. this level. Yes, and um, that are willing to take on, you know, that are not going to make compromises. There's words there, I just can't find them. I know what you mean? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, because you said something early in the show too, which was like, well, if you're not going to do this, way, I don't want to work with you. I'm the same way. Really? I'm the same right way. there. There's a certain way people desire to work with you because they're like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta sort myself out, or I want to, I want what he's asking, gotta sort myself out, or they're like, yes, that's me, because they don't want to pussyfoot around with their own career. They're not going to work with someone who's going to pussyfoot around with them. So yes, tell them this is what it takes. Yes, you know, in the story for the company, where you know I said those pivotal moments that yes, audacious goals. Yes. They. This is where it all has to link back in. I'm going to take you through those moments. I'm going to help you with this, this. Because at the moment, I don't know where you sat with the 50 million. I don't know what you actually brought to the table in terms of the pivots and the keeping it going up against what obstacles, um, what tenacity did that take? Um, all I know is that you started something and maybe there were four other people and actually just kind of, you know, faffed around and the market was the market and it just, people wanted what you were selling and you're like, oh, isn't this lovely? Didn't this happen easily? You know, at the moment, there's no context where you fit in. You're like a jigsaw puzzle that's round. Yeah. Pieces round, and it's like, well, where does it fit? It could fit anywhere. And now he's just floating like a cloud anyway because he's just on his own doing this coaching thing. Um, But no, you're not. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Even telling me what you're actually intending to build this out to be, based on who you what you've done yes if you tell me what you're meant you're building with this what your intention is with it you will find people that go i want a piece of that i'll come in on that because you're credible yes yes like if i wrote that or someone else wrote that i don't want to put myself down there but someone else could write that it's like Mm -hmm. oh that's good luck to you fine cool that's nice isn't it yes because they just like, well, who are you? You've not made a business for that amount of money. But when they see that you want these opportunities because you're creating this thing and you've handled that type of money before on teams of that size, um, and you know, they're gonna go, Yeah, I'll get on board. Can I can I can I invest in this? Can I introduce you to so and so? The timing of this is impeccable. So first of all, I wanna be respectful of your time and you all right, so Nicole Bernard, I'm going to remove Naomi Rose Everly. Uh, we are going to wrap that segment up here on the show. Um, let's put this up. How do I get this back up there? There we go. Boom. Uh, so, what did you take from that? Um, that I need to go look at my LinkedIn profile. I mean, first off, <laughs> yes, before she does. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I, yeah, because it's funny. Like, I went and looked at mine. I was like, you know, it's okay. But as she started going through the points, I was like, oh, now I can see where I need more detail, but not detail about me in that annoying way. Does that make sense? I don't know it, that does. it does. It okay. does. So, interestingly enough, full transparency, I too went to your profile after she you know, went through mine. And last night as I was preparing for the show, I went and looked at yours and I'm now looking at everybody's profiles through a different lens. Truthfully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. I need to change my banner image. Yeah. There's yeah. A few <laughs> it's funny she, how she mentioned in the third person. Cause that's how my profile used to be like years ago. Yes. I think like everybody's used to be. Um, yes. so it's yeah. just funny. It kind of made me giggle when she said that. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, like she, she listed some obvious things for me that weren't so obvious before <laughs> before she mentioned them mm -hmm. and, and after after our chat nicole uh there really is a right way and a wrong way to display yourself on linkedin totally yep there, there right. really is you know and one of the simple things for me was was uh, if you scroll down to the bottom like my featured like it took me three seconds to go into canva make some imagery add it to my featured and within a minute later i stood out next to everybody else next to me because most most of us don't take the time to do that so if i can encourage anybody listening those little tricks and tips and just my titles like i had radio i had talk show host and she's like right. he's talk show host of what i was like going right. on well i guess that would help <laughs> yeah, right. and then the other thing was she was you have three thousand characters in your description like mm -hmm. use it to communicate your message. I had like 250 characters and I was like, right. Like just some obvious things that not only help with link juice, but communicating your message, communicating your offer. She did a great job. I thought uh, breaking mm -hmm. it down for me really did. Totally. Yeah. And I love that she pointed out how much we have because I, I think it's interesting too, to find that balance because, you know, we all hear, you know, our attention spans are super short, but I yes. think it's like, if you can, do it in a way and maybe like bullet points or somehow make it easy for them to scan yes. and dig more if they want. But yeah, it's kind of like catching them in the beginning and then yeah. Keep them yes. Around. Yeah. I'm glad you said bullet points in writing. So I don't know about you. I, again, we're dinosaurs. That's why. I think that's what it is, Bernard. I, so since I've really engaged and spent more time on LinkedIn, uh, I have, uh, and since chat GPT is spitting out tons of content these days, I got to tell you, I have absolutely moved my preference to reading, to bullet point, give it to me quick, yep. uh, highlight it. I don't need to read the long sentences unless I'm sitting down to read something that's like, if I know I'm sitting down to read, like, I don't know, like a New York Times piece or a long, a narrative that is that, that I see, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend eight times, eight minutes reading something about Nicole. I can get, I can get into that, but I'm witnessing on people's social content feeds we're talking paragraphs and paragraphs. And I'm like, Oh buddy, just cut it back. Yeah. No, we've got time for that. I mean, no, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and again, I look at, again, just calling out some of my creators that I follow, like the Nat Berman's, the Darren masses, the, uh, you know, Alana Sparrow's, the Hannah Larson, they just write in these short, tight bullet point where, and, and as I was talking with, um, with Melissa yesterday, uh, on my team, even just the way that it's visually displayed, Nicole, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Lana Sparrow. I know I call her. She was a guest on the show last week. The way that she writes, but then displays the writing. Like it's sometimes it starts with like with a small, like visually, if you can see this right now, your eyes, a nation, she'll start with like, you know, like three words and then work your way to like, when you're looking at a page, it's like a pyramid. Yeah. It goes out kind of like that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people write like that, which it's cool. Like it does. It visually it's attractive and it, you just, you don't feel like you're, diving into that like you don't think like you're committing but then you are <laughs> yeah you're, you know? you're right it's visually appealing isn't it mm -hmm. and it's funny because we have been taught to write not starting sentences with and right mm -hmm. or but or things like that yet I'm, I'm increasingly being taught to write the way that i speak mm-hmm Right, yeah. especially doing this show now, we're speaking all the time. You know, we're always has having something to say. I'm finding my writing now is more closely referencing how I speak. Short, full bullet points, bang, bang, bang. Same. Yeah, 
It's funny. I, I write like that as well. And like when I write for entrepreneur, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I should probably be like more professional. And I even put in like parentheses, like, ha ha. And they've actually left yes. it in. Like, I, cause the first few times I'm like, they're going to tell me to rewrite this. But I think that's just how we're starting to write. It's how we talk, you know, and that's how people kind of. Yes. Connect, I guess. Yes. Yes. When you watch your kids write, Nicole, are they writing? Like when you see your kids writing, uh, are they writing? Like how you and I were taught, or are you seeing changes on how they are changing their writing styles? Eh? Uh, no, they're writing kind of like how I was taught. Um, yes. It's funny, my daughter had like an indent for the paragraph on yes. like her word document. I was like, whoa, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. <clears throat> you know, just like the where it starts. But it's, I, know. Yeah, I don't, I don't write like that at all anymore. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's really like formal sentences and also yes. yeah no and or but or because like they don't start sentences like that which i guess is good to learn but yeah yeah but, but you start to ask yourself what's the point of learning it if we're not going to use it yeah it's true right yeah. so and i am I'm, that's a whole different discussion for another right. day right. Uh, as a matter of fact i reached out to a guest this morning uh a, a fellow who wrote a long form article about um questioning uh, you know, education and professors and, and how they're teaching. And, and if, if, if you're learning from an online professor, hear me clearly, if you're learning from an online professor, who's never there, why aren't you just using chat GPT or Gemini or like, like what's the value of the human being that great article. So I reached out to this guy to have him on the show here. So uh, anyway, so we're 52 minutes in admittedly nation, the clip with Rose took long. Naomi Rose took longer than I thought which is okay. I hope you guys found value in it. we got a lot of engagement right now and viewers right now, Nicole. So I'm thinking that we did have some value in it. Uh, as we're wrapping up the last six minutes of the show here today, why don't we, uh, um, why don't we give some life hacks to people? Yeah. Well, I love life hacks. I have one that come across my feed this morning that I was like, really? So you travel, you get on an airplane every now and then. I know I do every now and then. Did you know that if you simply took your phone hashtagged your flight number to yourself so so you're getting on flight uh you're getting on flight uh uh america american airlines 878 ama 878 mm -hmm. if you text hashtag ama 878 to yourself get on your airplane and go about your day anytime you look in your messages and 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 tap that message it's going to pop up and track your flight Wow. Yeah, no, I never knew that. It's a secret little hack built into messages, into, into mm -hmm. Apple Apple messages. That's crazy. I mean, I guess I'm not surprised. Nothing really surprises me anymore, but that's just cool. Yeah. It is. So, so, so Nation, if you're traveling today or traveling next week, just text right. yourself your hashtag, your flight number, and forget about it. And you can track yeah. your flights that way. Can you text it to someone else too? And like they can track you or is it just to yourself? You like if I were to like text my husband. Time. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Hey, speaking of texting your husband, I read, I read something this morning. I read, I read a viral piece where uh, a, a young lady went and, and, and uh, listed her 14 rules for her husband. Oh, her okay. rules. One of them was always have to share your location with me on, on location sharing. Interesting. Okay. What's, your PO, what's your POV on that? Do you and Benton share each other's locations? Like, do you do you guys share? It? <laughs> nice, nice face. <laughs> I, so I love this because to those listening can really get a sense of the demographic of the show here when you're listening when you listen to Keith and Nicole because we are at Regis and Kathy Lee, not Kelly. Regis and Kathy Lee back in 1880. So Nicole's face was that consternated, constipated. Like, no, I don't share my location with Benton. Well, I mean, if he used his phone like a third of the time, then it might work. <laughs> but <clears throat> half the time it's dead or in like his drawer. And so, yeah, it's a right, farmer. Yeah. Yeah. He's helpless. I mean, so <laughs> like I think if I was like, you should know my location, he would be like, what? <laughs> Why? How about your kids? Do you have your kids location sharing? Well, they only have the the watches, and okay. so yeah, I can track them, but um, yes. they don't have phones. Got it, got it, got it. So her argument was, and I and I got to be honest with you, I I think it's a relatively safe uh, argument, opinion, whatever, however you want to frame it. She's like, if it's somebody you love and who's somebody who's important to you, you're probably going to want to know where they are. Yeah. 
That makes sense. I mean, he does mountain bike a lot. Like, there are times where he's gone for, like, hours without a phone. It's kind of like, huh. Yeah. I mean, I hope the bear didn't eat him. I mean, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and her comment, Nicole, was not about stalking. It was right. more so around the context of, well, you know, so I, I, I have great comfort knowing where my children are. Right. Same. Right. So, yeah. you know, um, and, and say so my wife, it's not about stalking. It's like, okay. Cause I find it's, it's, it's like, okay. It's like, okay. So I know my kids are home tonight. They're home sleeping. So if I forgot their moms, I can just quickly look. Okay. They're at home sleeping. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's just something peaceful about that. No different than if I knew they were sleeping in the house. Yeah. Right, no, or totally Benton was in the garage or doing something in the yard. You kind of know it's, and I think because we've been conditioned with, you know, not knowing over the years. Now that technology allows us to know, it's like, is it? Do you know what I mean? So, anyways, I thought that was an interesting comment where she's like, "My partner needs to share the location with me all the time," and yeah. some some people jumped on her like, "Ah, oh, you're a stalker," and some people were like, "No, that, that seems reasonable." Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely I feel like the pendulum is definitely swayed because, like, as kids, I mean. <clears throat> there was no way for our parents to track us, which was fun and like a whole different yeah. experience yes. than what they have now. But as a parent now, I'm like, uh, yes. I would not love not knowing where my kids are all day. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't know if it's so much about tracking Nicole as it is maybe a change of words, which is creating awareness. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, like where we are, where our children are and creating that comfort. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely different times. I feel like so. It I feel absolutely like, is. It yeah. absolutely is. Yeah. hundred percent. Hey, the show went better today than I got to, than I admit that it, that I thought it was going to. I, I know, why do you think it was going to be so bad? I mean, I know I woke up late, but I'm not sure why you felt. <laughs> I just I was I did, just didn't feel as ready as I wanted to be. I I I uh, I like to, as you can see, I like to do things the right way. I, it's important mm -hmm. to me. I, I want to serve our audience well. I want people to be entertained, informed. I want them to come back. And you know, I see. <laughs> Got a bunch of viewers on right now, and I've been watching the numbers over our time frames here to see what you know people are coming and going. And and good morning, nation. Hope so. If you're just tuning in, I invite you to go back. I had Naomi Rose Everly rip apart my LinkedIn profile, and she's coming back to do Nicole. So Nicole's been frantically changing hers up. So if and if you want some free advice on how to change your LinkedIn profile, inviting you back. DM me. Naomi's gonna come back and be a regular guest. And uh, and her job's going to be rip part profiles and have some fun with it. And it's not to make you feel shitty. It's just about. It. Oh, hey Nicole, sorry, I dropped the S word on the morning show. Uh oh, we were so close. I've been great. All these children tuning in. I that's just real life. <laughs> Nicole, we're wrapping up. What do you got planned for the day today? Mm. Going to the gym. Like that's yes. like the big thing on my not looking forward to radar um i'll be honest so and i still yeah that yeah that is my big thing um other than that work so awesome yeah legs day for me today so i went for i went for a walk this morning i got a, i got legs day today and then i'm gonna go for a run so uh, because i hate running mm -hmm. and i know that keith and nicole's ambition with the show is to encourage inspire and motivate all of you so i'm going for a run today nicole's going to do some strength training today I hate running. She hates strength training. So I invite anybody listening right now to go and do something today that you hate. I really do. And and if and 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 send us a message. Reach out to Nicole on LinkedIn. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Share with us what you've done that you hate. And maybe join us in the show and talk about it. We want to create that kind of community, that kind of tribe here live and mornings in the lab. Nicole, um, until tomorrow. Yep, yeah, sounds great. Awesome. Enjoy your have a, thank you. Have a great lift. Everybody, enjoy your day. I'm back today here at noon with, uh, with, with the guest. Oh, Catherine McCord is joining me today live in the lab at noon with Keith Bills. I think we're digging into some interesting conversations around DEI, business, et cetera, et cetera. So oh, cool. come back at noon, and I will see you later, Nicole Bernard. Okay. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. All right. Gonna get the, where's my mouse? Got to get that out of there. Move.